Right, so Sub-Saharan Africa as a whole and Africa as a whole is actually quite uh, attractive uh, from a brewing perspective. SAB Miller doing quite well on the continent. Put it into context for us uh, right now. When you see SAB Miller and you're seeing such fantastic growth, it's not without its worries because we know that there's also in increased competition here. You know, I think when we look at these numbers, we weren't surprised to see levels of 15% volume growth. We are very bullish on the outlook for volume growth story um, across our sub-Saharan economies. Um, and we see a number of drivers for that. One is urbanization. So the urbanization rate is now sitting at about 40%. So 40% of people are now living in cities and in big towns. And what that brings about as well is rising income levels and greater access to more amenities. So all of that creates an environment that's very good for consumer companies, beverages being one of them. The next thing that we see as a big driver for this volume growth is what the companies themselves are doing. So they are actually driving strategies to try and increase the population into the formal drinking market. So if you look at the volumes that are consumed per capita, beer volumes mm -hmm. per capita across Sub-Sahara, they are still pretty low. We are talking about maybe 11 liters per capita. This compares with maybe 56 for South Africa, and we're looking at over 100 liters per capita. But it's not lack of demand, though, it's just lack of access. No, it's completely lack of um, access because Africans, we as a continent, do not drink any less than anyone else. It's just that the share of what we drink from formal producers is a lot less. Yeah. So our estimates, um, which I think most of the beverage companies agree with, is that probably 60% to 66% of the market is still in informal hands. So you can see where the growth potential comes. But we have three major players on the African continent, the form of SA, Bimela, Diageo and Heineken. Yes. And they're all vying for market share. Uh, there, is, there must be room, though, for more players to come to the fore. Well, I mean, yes and no. Obviously, again, if you look at the percentage of what's in the formal market and what's in the informal market, there's still a long way to go. But when you look at dominance of that formal market within each of those um, countries, you'll see that a very clear picture has emerged. So there are countries where SAB Miller dominates, there are countries where Diageo dominates, and there are countries where Heineken dominates. Nigeria is an interesting country because that's where you've got both uh, Diageo and you've got Heineken. You've got Heineken with a maybe 66% market share and um, Diageo in the 30s. But in most cases, you'll find that one single producer has well over 70%, if not 90% of that market, which makes it harder for a new player to come and squeeze in. And we know Africans really like the international brands uh, as a whole. I'm not really sure about beer. Maybe you could add some insight into that. But I know in terms of uh, clothing and other luxury goods, uh, perhaps beer is not a luxury good, but it is, of course, status in a sense, especially when you're drinking specific alcoholic beverages. Is the same thinking then applied? And do you think that more international players actually have uh, more opportunity to grow extensively on the African continent? I think as you get an increasing middle class across the African countries, you will see more of that. So there is a top end already where you're seeing some of the luxury or should say top end premium brands coming in. But also a big growth story is moving people from that informal market into the formal market. And that's really being driven by the introduction of low cost beers. So you're right, people do like brands. They want to move out of home brews, etc., and they want to get into the formal market. So are you saying beer um, companies right now, or um, alcoholic companies, SAB Miller, a buy right now, given the fact that it is defensive perhaps in nature? You know, when we look across sub-Saharan Africa, we're very positive on a couple of them. Delta, for instance, in Zimbabwe, yeah. we have as a buy. Um, we like Nigerian, um, Nigerian breweries, and we also like Brilio and Rwanda. We think those three are very attractive.